I'm Peter Blank, head of the Art and Architectural Library here at Stanford University. Today I want to talk with you about our exhibition, More Than Robert Frank's The Americans, American Photography in 1960. It's installed in four exhibition cases here in the Art and Architectural Library. Robert Frank's The Americans is an acknowledged masterpiece in the history of American photo book publishing. This is the 2008 Steidel edition. The book has been published in several editions since it first appeared in 1960. One of the reasons we have so much attention on Robert Frank's The Americans is due to this amazing effort of 500 plus page exhibition catalog um, that accompanied the exhibition Looking In, Robert Frank's The Americans, brought to us by Sarah Greenow, curator at the National Gallery of Art. It's an amazing compendium of information about Robert Frank and the publication of The Americans. Yet it must be remembered that when Frank's Americans first appeared in the United States in 1960, it was roundly greeted with derision and negative comments. What we want to do is look at some of the material in the first case as we discuss the sort of reception of Frank's The Americans. As I stated, the book is an acknowledged masterpiece in the, in the history of the American photo book. Frank's images are now quite iconic, very familiar to students of photography, especially American photography. The work is indeed somewhat dour, the prints quite dark. But one thing that most people don't realize is that the Americans, the photographs of the Americans first appeared in this US camera annual for 1958, probably appearing actually in 1957, where a short portfolio of Frank's photographs that would later lead, uh, become uh, lead to the Americans were seen in this short portfolio with an introduction by Walker Evans, who was a champion of Frank's work, and a uh, closing essay by Frank himself. This is one of five photo annuals um, in this exhibition from the United States, Great Britain, and Germany. The portfolio includes a number of images that appeared in the Americans, including this shot from New, or New Orleans trolley car, which was on the cover of the book. Evans' essay discusses uh, Sir Frank's approach to photography. That Frank has responded to America with many tears, some hope, and his own brand of fascination. You can see in looking over the rest of his pictures of people of roadside landscapes and urban cauldrons and of semi-divine, semi-satanic children. He shows high irony towards a nation that, generally speaking, has it not adult detachment towards a more or less juvenile section of the population that came into his view. This bracing, almost stinging manner is seldom seen in a sustained collection of photographs. It is a far cry from all the woolly, successful photo sentiments about human familyhood, from the mindless pictorial sales talk around fashionable, guilty, and therefore bogus heart feeling. It's quite possible that Evans' statement there is a reference to Edward Steichen's Family of Man exhibition, which opened in 1955. And from Robert Frank's statement, I just want to read a short section here. I have been frequently accused of deliberately twisting subject matter to my point of view. Above all, I know that life for a photographer cannot be a matter of indifference. Opinion often consists of a kind of criticism, but criticism can come out of love. It is important to see what is invisible to others, perhaps the look of hope or the look of sadness. Now, these two statements, I think, are fairly telling, especially considering that they came out well before the release of the Americans. 
which was reviewed in this May 1960 issue of Popular Photography magazine. As I stated, the reviews for Frank's Americans were generally negative. Here's just a short, a short section from uh, the Bruce Downs review that appeared um, in, popular, in Popular Photography. Ugliness can be shocking. It can have impact, like a man spitting in your face but can also be given beauty by a sensitive photographer. Frank is sensitive, but apparently he was without love. There is no pity in his images. They are images of hate and hopelessness, of desolation and preoccupation with death. They are images of an American seen by a joyless man who hates the country of his adoption. The other reviews that appeared in this issue of popular photography are generally similarly negative. Now it's interesting to note that within this review section, two other books were also reviewed. A fairly basic travelogue of London by Jacques Boussard. And for our purposes, and perhaps more interestingly, this book by a photographer named Ozzy Sweet called My Camera Pays Off which is a guide in uh, uh, commercial photography and how to be a freelance photographer. And as you can see, the tone of Sweet's book, My Camera Pays Off, is quite different from what we would see in The Americans. And in his introduction, Sweet acknowledges that what he's trying to do is make money and have fun with photography. Within the pages that follow, I will try to prove that any man, woman, or child of average intelligence can do what I've done, which is make money and have fun with photography. A friend and fellow freelance photographer once summed up this happy situation. He said, I think freelance photography is a big, exciting adventure. Everywhere I go, there are worthwhile pictures all around me, in every direction, like chest of treasure just waiting to be found. I'm mighty thankful for the eyes that let me see those treasure chests. Now the important thing that we want to note for the sweet book is it shows part of the world of the freelance photographer and actually by extension the art photographer. These are all cover images that were created by Ozzy Sweet. They're from Real Story, Ladies Home Journal, Time Magazine, Family Circle, Dodge News, Sport Magazine, etc., and so on. This was the world of the freelance uh, commercial photographer. Not necessarily the world of Robert Frank and Walker Evans and the art photographers, but what this first case attempts to do is to start to demonstrate that there's a larger field of cultural production within which all photographers operated purpose of this first case is to, one, suggest that this larger field in fact does exist, um, that it involves a range of photographic practices, very diverse, which we will uh, discuss in more detail in the second case, and that one of the best ways to begin to populate this field of cultural production is by looking at the published literature from this period as this literature is the sort of the cultural artifacts from this time period. Now we'll move to the second case and discuss the diverse practices that exist within the world of art photography.